Hey guys, it's Adam here, and this is Tabletop Theory with Flux 5.0. So if you caught my Game of the Year um, video back at the start of the year, um, one of my honorable mentions for the year was Tabletop Games, um, which seems odd, but for me, the concept of a tabletop game or a card game or anything like that, I didn't really grow up with them. So, you know, my extent of my knowledge and, and, my, and what I'd actually played before had been, you know, things like Monopoly, Connect Four, um, you know, the, the usual suspects. Um, so... I didn't really, I didn't have that much of a interest or definitely not a passion for it. That's for sure. Um, and then last packs, um, I just, I don't know, something, I just sort of decided, I was like, I kind of just want to buy a tabletop game or a card game or something like that. Just to sort of try it out, just to give it a go. I wasn't, I wasn't really, didn't really have any sort of uh, particular goal in mind or anything. I was like, oh, I want to become a tabletop game. I was like, just. It's something, something piqued my curiosity. I didn't know what it was. I know the previous year, um, um, Nathan bought a copy of uh, King of Tokyo, which kind of, we sort of toyed around with for a little bit. We never really spent the time to learn it properly and we, we gave it a couple of good goes. But So I guess it kind of started from back then, but we, dev- we haven't really done anything with it since and I certainly haven't done anything with it since either. But there was just something about this last PAX that just really, I don't know, I just I, I felt compelled to give it a go. And I picked up a couple of games. I picked up um, uh, Munchkin Adventure Time. So you know, I guess the game Munchkin, but with an Adventure Time theme. Still haven't played that one properly yet. Played it with my wife and, and my, my, my six-year-old daughter. And we've sort of got the hang of it. And, but you know, I'm not too sure about that one. You'll have to give it another go. And the other one I played was Sushi Go. Well, the other one I picked up was Sushi Go. Sushi Go is fantastic. Absolutely brilliant game. I'll get to that another time. Um, but from there, I just started... I don't know, just something took over. I don't know what it is, but um, uh, like there's years and years and years of all these amazing games, bought, or tabletop games coming out and I get to discover them now, which is just, it's awesome. It's fantastic. Imagine someone discovering video games now and they've got all this whole back catalog to go through. Well, that's what I feel like with tabletop games. So it's a, it's a huge um, new exciting thing for me and um, and I wanted to bring that into, into Rant Theory in some way. So that's why I've decided to, try this out try this this tabletop theory thing out and the first game i want to talk about today is flux 5.0 5.0 i can't talk today um and it's a <laughs> it's a simple card game uh literally on the box it says the card game with ever changing rules um it's a very simple concept that it's almost hard to explain you've just got to got to play it um we did a periscope um live stream uh the weekend uh, sorry, the last week, um, and we played it in our game group for the first time, and it was it was so much fun. I've played it a couple of times before then um, with my family, and and we've we've had a really good time with it there as well. But when you get it in in a in amongst a group of a bit more uh, a looser attitudes, we'll say, um, chaos really starts to happen. Basically, to break it down for you, Flux 5.0 is a game that has one rule, and uh, that one rule is. Play a uh, sorry, draw a card and play a card. So that's your first, that's your one rule that you've got. Until it's not. <laughs> so when you um, get your hand of cards when you first deal out, you get three cards to start off with. Um, now the three cards you have could be one of any of these cards here. So you could have a keeper. Now a keeper card is kind of like. Well, actually, I'll come back to a keeper. That's a keeper. We'll just we'll just say that's a card you can get. Then you've got actions. So actions are like things that you allow you to, to basically, um, you know, do something straight away, like an immediate thing. So in the case of this card, it's take another turn. Literally just means you can take another turn after you finish your turn. So if you're doing your draw one, play one, and then you play that card, then you get to draw one, play one again. Pretty simple. Um, now, remember when I said there's no, um, there's no rules, and, you know, there's basically only one rule until there's not. <laughs> So you can actually draw new rules. Um, you can actually play cards as your as your turn that changes the way the game plays, like literally. So if it's my turn and I draw one and I play one card and it's a new rule, which is hand limit of one, that literally means that if you've got five cards in your hand, you have to discard down to one card. So 
you can imagine <laughs> how that works in a game of, you know, as, say, for example, one of the new draw cards, one of the new rules you draw out is draw five, play one. So you're going to start amassing this huge, like, hand of cards, um, and but you can only play one at a time. So as soon as someone draws out a hand limit of one, you have to basically get rid of all your cards. Um, and rule cards don't get taken away unless, for one, the one way they get taken away is if a new rule comes out, someone plays a new rule and it contradicts the rule that you're playing. So say, for example, someone has hand limit of three, then this card goes away and the new hand limit is now three. Um, you could get you know extra draws. So say you've got draw two and then someone plays draw five. The draw two gets taken away. The draw five is now the new rule. Um, and you could have literally you know, six, seven, eight, nine rules out at once that you've got to follow. And some of them are just outrageous. They're ridiculous. Um, part of the, the fun of this game is the fact that you've got to try and keep up with what the heck you need to be doing. So uh, yeah, really, really, really clever thing that the new rule. And the other thing is um, there's no goal. There's no end result to the game until there is one. So basically goal cards come into it as well. So you can play a goal card. Now, um, goal cards obviously differ throughout the deck. One of the most common ones you'll come across is a card, like say for example, the appliances where you've got to draw a toaster and a television and you've got to have that in play for yourself to actually win the game. So when I was saying about the keepers before, this one here, the moon, um, keepers are the basically basically the cards that help you win the game. So if the goal card of uh, toaster and television, the appliances comes out and if I've got a toaster and a television keeper cards in my hand and I can play them onto the table while that card's still out then I'll win the game the likelihood of that happening though is pretty slim because people are constantly dishing out new rules new cards you know you might have to discard keepers you might have to discard your hand you might have to um you know you might only get one play you need to play two cards you might have to play all your cards except for one card so that you, have, you end up having to get rid of a lot of cards and then someone's going to end up just changing the goal anyway in, the, in their turn so it's crazy. It's absolutely amazing um, to play uh, because it, it, it's never going to be the same twice. Like, um, well, you know, the, the likelihood of it being the same outcome twice is very unlikely. Um, so I love it. It's fantastic. It's really cheap. It's like a little box, you know, like you take it around with you anywhere you want. Um, and it's been it's been lots of fun to play. So um, if you haven't already, check out our Periscope on it. It's um, hopefully this sort of clarifies a little bit what's going on in that video. Um but yeah, it's absolutely worth checking out if you um, if you want a quick, uh, well, I say quick, but some games can go for half an hour to 40 minutes. Um, but if you want a, a nice, easy to play card game that's going to um, you know, captivate your, your game group, then Flux 5.0 is absolutely worthwhile. Um, cool, guys. That's uh, the first edition, I guess we can say, of uh, Tabletop Theory. Um, I've got some more stuff coming up pretty soon. If you like this, um, please let me know because, um, yeah, I want to know if I should keep doing these um it's like i said it's a new thing for me and I, my knowledge of tabletop and board games and card games and all that sort of thing is pretty limited but i'm starting to learn more and more and more as i go um so yeah if you, if you want to see more stuff like this please just let me know on the, on the website or on twitter um and yeah we'll, we'll catch you in the next one cheers guys have a good one